going to be looking at uh, ripping information, grabbing files and stuff from a website automatically. Uh, it's something that you, in many cases, can do manually, um, but you may want to automate it. In some cases, it might be a little bit difficult uh, to do it manually, as we'll see here in a moment. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to search for free digital comics. And the first one up here is Marvel.com. Gotta love Marvel Comics. And they have a few comics you can read here for free. So we'll click Read It Online. And uh, it starts loading, which is great. But uh, you notice that it's Flash. Um, which is fine. Runs fine on my desktop. But let's say I want to read this on my tablet. Now, my tablet does play Flash, but not well. Uh, and in some cases, you might have a tablet uh, that doesn't have flash or you just don't want to use flash uh, on your tablet whatever your reasoning and you just want to grab the images of these files and obviously they're not going to let you just right click here and and grab the image but they are just regular jpegs um, so we just need to find out where they are so what I'm going to do is I have firebug installed um, and you know what the built-in firefox console might work for this as well as well as chrome's built-in console I'm going to try uh, let's see Click out of the flash file here for a second. And uh, I'm going to just hit F12 and start up uh, my console for um, uh, Firebug here. And uh, I'm going to say uh, net. I'm going to say all. I could probably just do images. But what I'm going to do is hit here and hit F5 to refresh this page. Now we have a bunch of stuff opening up here. And some of these, such as uh, they're going too fast for me. Uh, this one here, copy location, I'll paste that over here and hit enter. Oh, and then oh, that one just happened to be a little thumbnail. Medium, there should be ones that say high quality, high res, copy location, let's see. Trying to load that and nothing's loading, which is what happens, which is why we're going to automate this. Now, if I was quick enough, let's, uh, Open that back up, hit F5, and once I start seeing those images loading, ooh. copy link location if I copied the right one, paste it in there, hit enter, still not loading. Well, I'll tell you, if you do do it before the page finishes loading, you can get the high res image. but this is exactly the problem I'm talking about in the fact that uh, they must supply you with a cookie that times out immediately. I haven't really looked into, you know, dissecting, dissecting the flash page, but basically I am able to access those images while the page is loading, but as soon as it's done, I no longer have access to those files. Um, so what are we going to do? Well, the great news is, well, your browser does has access to those files. That's how it grabs it and loads it into the flash here. So we need to either create a plugin for our web browser here or create our own web browser, which is what we're actually going to do today. Uh, just because I'm not that familiar with creating plugins and seriously, it's maybe 15 lines of code to create an entire web browser using Python, WebKit, uh, and, and grabbing all those images. So what I'm going to do is I'll open up a terminal here. Bring it over here larger so you can see and I'm just going to make a directory for us to work in here I'll just call it MC for Marvel comic in this case move into that directory and then I'm going to use Vim as my text editor in this case to write out the script but use whatever text editor you prefer and I'll just call this web.py but you can once again call it whatever you'd like I'm going to start it off with our shebang line as we do with all our scripts uh, pound exclamation forward slash USR forward slash bin forward slash ENV for environment and then space Python. That's just telling our operating system that we're, this is a Python script. Use the Python environment, the Python interpreter. Next, we're going to import some stuff, some modules, uh, GTK for our GUI interface and our WebKit. Next, we'll create an object. We'll call it win. And if I'm going kind of fast for you, I have full playlists on both GTK and Web, WebKit going over the basics. So the first part of this is all review if you've watched those. Visit filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with the K, and check out 
our playlist, my playlist, uh, to look for those videos. But we're creating an object, we're going to call it win, what is it? It's using the GTK module, and we're going to use the function out of it uh, to create a window. Then we're going to say, take that object and connect a function to it, an action to it, and we're going to say, when the window is destroyed, we are going to basically end the script so that the script doesn't keep running in the background when uh, you close the window. Uh, so that's what all this means. And I go over that once again in previous tutorials. Uh, so now that we have that, let's make that window visible. So we'll say win.show, oops, win.show, and then parentheses there. So we made the window visible. Next, we're going to create a box, a container for this to go into. Uh, really, we're only adding the one object here, so we don't really need the box in this case. But if you're going to add other things, maybe an address bar or something to this later on, you're going to want a box. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it's going to be, we're using GTK module again, and we'll make a horizontal box. And we're calling it box1. And then we're going to say win.add that box to our window and then we're going to create an object we'll call it web and that is going to be from our webkit module and it's going to be a web view remember this is case sensitive capital W capital V next we're going to connect that object to something this is where uh, we start uh, getting into our looking at information that's being sent to the browser that the browser is actually requesting so we're going to connect uh, the web browser to something. So when do we want this to happen? We're going to say when our WebKit object um, source requests starting. So, and I am looking at notes for that part. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to create a function, we'll call it update. Uh, and let's go ahead and actually create that now. We'll go put that up here. So we're going to create a function, we're going to define it, so def update. Once again, you can call this function pretty much whatever you'd like. We're going to have a few variables that are sent to it. Really, most of them we don't care about, but we've got to have them in there in this case. We're going to say the view, the frame, the resource, the request, and the response. And really, the one that we really care about here is the request. So basically, as the page requests stuff, we are going to be doing what happens inside this uh, little function here. So don't forget to indent. Now we're going to say, we're going to create a variable called URL, and we're going to say that it equals whatever the request, the variable that we've created right there, which is whatever our WebKit object requests, dot get underscore URI, not URL, URI. And um, for now, we're just going to say print URL, which is our variable that we created, which is the URL to the request. Uh, so we have that. Let's go ahead and finish this part down here, our GUI portion of this. We've created our WebKit object. We've connected it to a function that we just created. Next, we're going to take our container object, our box that we created a few lines up, and we're going to say pack start. So we're going to take something and put it in there. What are we going to put in there? Our web object that we just created. Next, we're going to say web.open. This is going to be the page that this browser this object, this web object, opens. And if we go back over here, I'm just going to grab the URL to this here and put it in there. So when our script starts up and our GUI loads, it's going to automatically go to that page. And we're going to say box1, which is our container, show underscore all. Once again, there's only really one thing in there, but that will show our box and the web object inside it. And then the only thing left to do here for this first part is GTK main, starting up our basically our main GTK module, which will run everything. Okay. So next, uh, we save that. We got to make our script executable. Change mod x plus, plus x means executable, the name of our script. 
Now at this point I can say dot slash and the name of our script. There it goes, it loads up here. And not only is the flash loading, but you can see it's listing every request that the browser's making. So all the JPEGs, high res, all the uh, flash SWF files, everything that this is being requested within there, as it's being requested, it is being listed here, which is great. But uh, one, we don't want to see everything, and two, uh, we don't want we, we want to also download it, not just list it. Because at this point, if I try to open up one of these, I'm going to get an error saying that file's not available. Once again, because of the timeout, I'm guessing they're doing that with cookies. So you can also probably manipulate cookies in some way. But we're going to go back into our uh, little file here, our script, and we're going to add more to our function up here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a if statement, and what we're going to do is kind of grep through here, search for strings, and only display the URLs that contain a certain string. So what I'm going to do is if, and I'm going to give it a string here. Now I could just say JPEG because I know they're JPEGs, but there's other JPEGs on the page that I don't care about. Um, and like the buttons to go back and forth on pages and little icons uh, and stuff like that. So one way around that is if I just look at the URLs in my from what we just listed, I know that the ones I want to download, the URLs also have variables after the JPEG option in them. So I can put this here, this question mark. And in this case, that will eliminate everything else. It's going to vary from page to page. You just have to look at the output that we just generated uh, moments ago. So we're looking for that string in the URLs that we're grabbing. So if that string exists, then continue on doing this. So let's go ahead and run this again. And, uh, oh, oh, we're getting an error. What did I type wrong? Oh, uh, put things in the wrong order, I think, here. Vim, let's just move this line up and unindent it. I can't look at the variable until I create it. So we're looking at the request. Each request is being put into a variable. Then we're checking that variable for this string. If this variable, the URL that's being requested, contains JPEG and a question mark right after it, then we will print out that URL. Here we go, should start seeing, there we go. So you notice uh, all these little page icons and, and uh, front page, you know, next page, last page, all that stuff isn't, the only thing we're getting here is the high res. We could also have searched for the string high res uh, column, column? C-O-L, I don't know what they're, uh, yeah, anyway. So you can search for different strings depending on the page. And uh, so now we have a list. Let's go ahead and look into downloading those files automatically. So I'm going to list out here right now in this folder, the only file I have is my script. So I'm going to come in here and we're actually going to import a new module here. And uh, although WebKit, I'm quite sure, probably has an option, a function, to download files, off the top of my head, I don't know what it is. So I'm just going with what I know, uh, which I'm going to use the URL lib2 in this case. Obviously, in the future, there might be newer versions, URL lib3. So, you know, if three years from now you're going to do this and that module isn't available in your repositories, just do a search for URL lib and see what is available and uh, see if it works any different. Um, but so at this point, we can still, it's still nice to have the visual output, so we'll leave the print here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a, another variable using the URL lib. Uh, actually, we're creating an object in this case. Um, we're going to say u in this case. You can call it whatever you want. We'll say URL lib. To. So we're using the URL of two module and we're going to look at the function of URL open and then our variable of URL which we created here. But we're only doing this if that URL contains the JPEG question mark. So basically right now that object U is the image. It's in our memory, on, in our RAM uh, as a variable or an object and it's all binary JPEG data, we need to put it somewhere. So we need to create a file, write to it, and close it. 
So at this point, I'm going to just create another object called file. I'm going to say open it. So basically, it's going to be a file that I'm opening. And I can give it a name such as um, one.jpg. And I can say we're opening it to write to it, so a W. But the problem with that is each one would overwrite the next. And um, lots of times pages, the, the, the files are going to be named random things. So let's just number them. And since there's going to be more than 10, let's just keep it simple and start at 100. So our page, first page will be 100, 101. That way you don't have, don't have to have zeros as placeholders. So I'm going to click create a global variable here called x and set it equal to 100. Now to use that global variable in a function, we have to call it using global x, global name of the variable. So what we're going to do here is instead of saying a solid string that's not going to change, we're going to say take our variable x, but right now it's an integer and we need it to be a string, so we're going to say str to convert to a string um, and then we're going to say add it to or add to it dot jpeg then now that we have our file created it's open ready for us to write to we'll write to it so our file object dot write underscore or an underscore parentheses our object u which is containing the jpeg information right now we're going to read that and put it into the file. We're going to write that to the file. So we're reading from the one object and writing to the other object, which is the file. Uh, and then we're going to take our file object and close it. Now we still have an issue. X still equals 100. At this point, we're going to say X plus equals 1. So each time our web browser requests an object, it's going to check that object with this function. If that object, if that URL contains this string, then it will print it to the screen, grab that object, open up a file, write to it, close it, and then add one to our global variable of x. We're done. So what I can do now is run our script. Once again, I'll show you right now. I'll list it out. There's nothing in our folder but that one file, our script. If I run that script now, It's loading up the flash, and as it downloads each file, ooh, we're getting an error up here. Maybe I've accessed the file too many times. Error has been logged for you. That's an issue with talking to the site. It has nothing to do with our script. If that happens again, we'll try a different comic. Okay, one time error. Nope, happened again. Okay, not a problem. It's probably because I've connected to the site so many times they're probably blocking me. If I probably went back here and refreshed this in my browser, it's probably going to do the same thing. Or not. I guarantee to you this, this works. Let me just try grabbing another comic here. We'll grab this one here. Control C. I'll go back into our script. Don't think I wrote anything wrong, so I'm thinking it's just seeing that browser over and over again grabbing the same comic. It wouldn't be an issue because once you have the script written, you only need to run it once. So let me uh, once again list out here. Oh, it looks like it did start to download some files. Let's remove those and run our script again. Once again, it's nice having a little GUI visual here. Downloads the cover. And I'm um, getting an error here again. An error occurred. Log for your... You may ignore this. Well, I'm quite sure my script is written properly. And I'm thinking, let's just uh, stop the recording and come back in a little bit and try it again see if it's my script or if it's uh, their website blocking me okay so um, let me list out here remove all the JPEGs because uh, as soon as I stopped recording of course it started working again 
and it I didn't change anything in the script. It was just uh, I'm sure the site just saw me accessing the files so much that they ended up blocking me, which is good for them that they're monitoring that sort of stuff. Um, so let me run the script again. And there we go. And you can see as the uh, flash file is calling uh, the images, it's downloading them. So now this is useful for not only this, but really anything that comes into a website, because in a lot of cases, uh, as you can see in this case, HTTPS, which means you can't sniff the traffic and grab the images. It's something I probably would have done in the past, was sniff it and then extract all the JPEGs from the cap file. In this case, I uh, wouldn't be able to do that. It has to be done within the browser if I'm going to do any type of sniffing or anything like that, which I guess I don't even know if that would be considered sniffing. But once it's encrypted like that, it doesn't matter. You know, you can't sniff it. And a lot of sites are starting to encrypt the traffic, which is great. But if you uh, control the browser and the browser can request stuff, then you should be able to save whatever the browser is requesting. So not only JPEGs, any type of files. Um, so if you go to a website that has uh, streaming audio, you know, you go to a musician's website and they have a little player there, you should be able to find the MPEGs or MP3s or whatever format their music is in and um, extract it the same way. You just have to modify the code to look for the MP3s rather than the JPEGs. So um, kind of a long tutorial, a lot of review stuff there. I hope that you found it useful. And um, check out my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And um, if you enjoy this tutorial, check out all my other ones. I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos up on uh, open source programming, scripting, some on 3D design. And if you uh, appreciate and enjoy my tutorials, think about going to my site and uh, donating. There is a donate button. I would appreciate it. But I thank you for watching either way, and I hope that you have a great day. Oh, I should probably show you that these files really did download, huh? So let's go control C to kill that, or I could just close the window and I'll XDG open 100.jpg and cannot display a location in this folder. That's always good. You know, I'm just screwing up the end of the tutorial after 20 minutes. Let's go temp and we're under MC. I don't know why it wouldn't display a second ago, but I did get all those files. So now I can throw them on my tablet and read them. I can convert them to a, a PDF and read them on my tablet, or I like to load them up as a, you know, write some HTML code and go through them that way in my web browser, which is how I normally read my comics. So just thought I'd share that with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you didn't get too bored along the way. I know a lot of it was review and I just hope that you have a great day.